I saw that Goodwill does auctions, and so I was super curious about what's the process of buying a violin through Goodwill auctions. So I went onto their website, link down below. I found myself an adorable little German violin for $12. That's right, $12. Granted, shipping was a whole lot more. In the end, I ended up paying like 30 or 40 bucks. So it kind of, it, it evened out and was still cheaper than walking through the doors of a thrift store and finding a violin. I always wanted to modify a violin and I figured I wouldn't feel totally bad if maybe I didn't spend a lot of money for that violin. So great, thrift store violin. The other thing about this violin was that it ended up being three quarters not full size but I thought that was kind of perfect for this character because she would have found this violin at a school at an elementary school and so it would have been kind of a smaller size anyway I wanted to incorporate an Art Nouveau look I wanted it to look beautiful but like worn and rugged I wanted it to look like this character was expressing herself artistically with the violin like she modded it herself so that's what I did. What I figured this character did is maybe she found some gold spray paint and she spray painted it gold and then was like, nah, I don't really want a shiny gold violin. Maybe not. So then she repainted it white. And then of course through the heat and whatnot, it like kind of cracked. And so now the gold paint shows through and it's kind of really cool. Let's go mod a violin. Since we weren't really re-varnishing this thing, we did not need to completely strip it. We just needed to open up the varnish and give it a surface that the paint can grab onto. In the crackle effect that we are doing, you need a base color that is going to show through the crackle. I chose gold. I am using the Art Basics acrylics that usually you can find at either Michaels or Blick Art or whatever your local art store is, or even I think on Amazon. Next is to do the crackle layer. There are ways to do this with Mod Podge or even white Elmer's glue, but today we are going to use the Folk Art Crackle Solution. Just pour a little in a cup, uh, don't need a whole lot, and you want to get a nice good coverage on the whole thing. If you need to do one side and wait till it dries and you poured too much for the project, I like using Press and Seal to save my paint or like my craft solutions if I have to do one side of a thing and then flip it over into another side. After the crackle solution is completely dry, it will take hours to do so. We are going to use another layer of acrylic paint and I am using kind of a cream tone in this Deco Art Americana. The thickness of the paint will determine how thick and chunky your cracks are. I want thick, chunky cracks, so I'm putting this on very, very thick. If you want like tiny, fine cracks, you want to do thin layers. So you can already see that the cracks are already starting to form right away. Also, another huge tip on this. Once your crackle starts working, don't try to go back over it again. Pretty much do one sweep of the paint and you're done. Just leave it alone. While that was all drying, I'm not usually a huge let's design this on paper kind of person. I usually like to design as I go, but in this case, I was so worried about how things were going to go that I decided to crack open Photoshop and you can use really any kind of image software. And I found an image of a violin and the pieces that I wanted to use and I started pre-mapping what it would look like on the violin just to before I put it down definitely see what it looks like. What we are doing is a decoupage. Usually with decoupage you try to use something like tissue paper. I wanted specific designs so this is just images that I found online that I printed out on my Epson printer on regular paper and what we are doing is I am taking water and brushing around the image so that I can easily tear around the image very close to it so it has a texture that I can blend into the piece. All right, just double checking to make sure everything fits where I wanted it to and it still actually looks good. Now we are going to use the ever classic decoupage tool, Mod Podge. 
It's an adhesive and a sealer. And we're pretty much gonna just glue these puppies exactly where we placed them. I'm putting the pieces... Oh, yeah, so... <laughs> I didn't show footage of spray painting this tail piece and the, the chin rest. And that was a little too big, so I'm just trimming it off with a little more, like, water and tearing. Because we don't want to block off those F-holes. Yes. Yes, the F-holes. They are actually called the F-holes. Now I'm taking more of that acrylic paint that we did the top layer of the crackle and I'm just blending the edges of the paper into the violin. There was a lot of paint this, let it dry. Paint this, let it dry. So this is definitely not one of those last minute projects. What you're seeing here is one attempt and a major screw up. So what you're going to see here is where I totally screwed up. I tried to use the method where you do a layer of Mod Podge and then use this like it was a, called a antiquing wax. It was supposed to turn the image into something that looked antique and cracked as well. And it ended up just looking muddy and I lost most of the detail I felt in the flower. I hated it, so I just ripped it right off and started over again. But no worries. It was very easy. Just printed out another flower and placed it back on there. While that was drying, we tried to attempt two. We're doing Mod Podge to seal. I'm just putting water in here so that I can just do a watered down acrylic on top of the image instead. As you can see, that actually worked pretty well on the flower. Just doing very, very watered down light layers, wiping it off right away because you just want it to barely make the cracks pop so that you don't lose your the detail of your image. I was really concerned right here that that was what we were going to lose. but. So I just decided to start taking my fingers and just do it really light. I realized that I didn't like how the fingerboard was going, so I wanted to repaint that. So I used Press and Seal again to protect the violin while I spray painted the fingerboard. However, another screw up. My painter's tape was not so kind and the crackle paint came off right away. So I had to go back and touch up those pieces right there. Here I'm just taking a silver paint pen and doing those swirlies because I thought this would be fun. Ironically, when I put the strings back on the violin and starting playing again, some of those swirls are actually where you're supposed to place your fingers. So in a way, they're almost like cheater marks for frets. So that was kind of a cool accent. I took some good old rub and buff and made the fine tuner stand out a bit. Again, this is a well-loved violin. We want to show some wear and tear on it, even though it's well taken care of. So I'm just taking some sandpaper and roughing things up a bit. Okay, so here is where we learned how to reset a sound post and I had to fish it out just like you kind of fish out a pick if you've ever dropped a pick in a guitar. That little notch right there is what needs to be facing towards the top. I pretty much, I referenced two different videos on how to set sound posts. 
I bought this tool online and it was very, very difficult to work with. The sound post kept falling off and into the piece at this one. I think I actually got it in this shot and I was super, yeah, I did. And this is where I go to adjust where it was. And I ended up just knocking the sound post over and having to start again. And I did this, I, I don't know how many times, but I know that I am now a master at fishing sound posts out of violins. I don't know, I went through like 20 plus attempts. I accidentally stabbed myself in the hand with the freaking tool because it's like a knife on one side. And then there was the late evening when I split the sound post. I have to stop working because I split my sound post. But in the end, I was successful in setting my sound post. Turns out there is a better tool out there for this. But I was running out of time and that tool wouldn't have shown up in time for me to benefit from it. But I still ordered it because sound posts, they can fall. I don't want to deal with this method of trying to set a sound post again. The violin is everything I hoped it would be, and now I am kind of emotionally attached to it if something happened to, to it in LARP. Um, I mean, yeah. Oh well, I guess. It's cool. <laughs>